Hello friends. In this video, we'll discuss the FMG radiology recall questions from July 23 session. And we had a very balanced paper in radiology in the FMG exam this year. And you had some expected topics and also a lot of integrated questions with radiology. So let's look at them one by one. Let's look at the first question. It's a very, you know, standard question that came in. What is the diagnosis of the image given below? So, and they gave you a CT scan image and you can see here, this is the right kidney and this is the left kidney and both the kidneys are fused across the midline. And when you see both kidneys on either side of the vertebra fused across the midline, this is a horseshoe kidney. Please be careful with a fused ectopic. In fused ectopic, you will have both the kidneys on one side of the vertebra. So if you see both the kidneys fused but on one side of the vertebra, the answer would be a fused ectopic. In horseshoe kidney, the both kidneys are on either side of the vertebra. As we see in the image, this is the vertebra. And both kidneys are on either side of the vertebra. This is horseshoe kidney. If both the kidneys are on one side of the vertebra, that would become a crossed fused ectopic. Looking at the next one, a child was brought to the emergency with complaints of bilious vomiting. X-ray abdomen is given. What is the diagnosis? So you have been given a child with bilious vomiting. And remember, when you see the radiograph showing this stomach bubble and the first part of duodenum forming a double bubble appearance on the abdominal radiograph, this is suggestive of duodenal atresia. Congenital hypertrophic perectionosis would have a single bubble on the radiograph. Jejunal atresia would have triple bubble, right? And volvulus, the sigmoid volvulus would have the classic coffee bean appearance, right? So here they gave you bilious vomiting and a double bubble appearance this is duodenal atresia remember d for d is what du double bubble so if you see double bubble that is duodenal atresia double bubble appearance such double bubble appearance can also be seen in annular pancreas so when you have annular pancreas also similar radiograph can be seen in the presence of lad bands also so you can remember this lad Right, double bubble is seen in lad bands, annular pancreas, and duodenal atresia. Now let's look at this next important question. Uh, elderly diabetic patient presenting with acute right flank pain, chills and rigor, and also you know the patient had fever and uh, temperature was mentioned in the question. Investigation abdominal radiograph is given to you. What is the presumptive diagnosis based on this abdominal radiograph? So if you see the abdominal radiograph, I hope you can see. On the plane abdominal radiograph in the region of the right lumbar region you are seeing mottled air lucency so you are seeing in the right flank region the presence of air pockets so this is suggestive of a air producing infection in the kidney the patient is diabetic and uh, acute right flank pain chills and rigor fever in the patient all of this go in favor of your emphysematous cholecystitis, emphysematous cholecystitis. Remember, the investigation of choice would be CT scan, right? So, to look at this air-containing infections, the CT scan is a preferred investigation. Now, look at the next question. A patient complains of a painless mass which is gradually growing in size. X-ray reveals the following. What is the likely diagnosis? Is it osteochondroma, multiple myeloma, Ewing sarcoma, or osteochondroma? So, if you look at the radiograph, this is a knee radiograph showing you a bony lesion which is continuous with the cortex and the medulla of the bone which is growing away from the growth plate going away from the joint so this structure which is growing away from the joint right away from the growth plate this is osteochondroma so this is a osteochondroma so a painless mass in a patient growing gradually in size which is growing away from the growth plate this is osteochondroma and another important and easy question, a young male complaining of pain with image showing a diaphyseal lesion, what is a likely diagnosis? Okay. So, if you are seeing a eccentric cortical based lesion, eccentric and it is cortical, right? It is in the cortica, cortex of the bone and uh, it is in the diaphysis, right? It's diaphysis. So, cortical based eccentric diaphyseal lesion producing pain, right? Pain at the night relieved by salicylate or relieved with aspirin. This is a therapeutic test with aspirin that we do. Therapeutic test with aspirin. Right? This is osteoid osteoma. It has a nidus, central nidus with a sclerotic rim. 
benitus produces prostaglandins which cause pain in the patient right and we need to go for radio ablation of this area right so we go for a radio ablation so please remember osteoid osteoma is a cortical base lesion eccentric lesion right diaphyseal lesion and this can produce pain at the night which is relieved with aspirin and it shows you a central nidus right so central nidus with sclerotic rim the central nidus with sclerotic rim and what does this give you on bone scan? This would produce double density sign on bone scan. You can remember this as osteoid osteoma, osteoid or double O, right? Osteoid osteoma. The next question, linear accelerator uses which particles? So linear accelerator, we also called as LINAC, right? Linear accelerator or LINAC. This is used in radiotherapy to generate X-rays. So LINAC produces electron beam, and x-ray beam right so x-ray so the answer here should be x-rays gamma rays are produced by cobalt 60 machine used in you know gamma knife whereas linac is used in cyber knife right so linac is used in cyber knife so it is used in cyber knife and cyber knife produces x-rays so linear accelerator which is used for external beam radiotherapy, teletherapy and also in cyber knife. This is used to generate the x-rays. Another question, they mentioned a patient who is having the following findings and they showed an image showing this tortuous veins in the lower limb that was varicose veins and they asked you what is the investigation that is preferred to identify this condition. So the investigation of choice for varicose veins is a duplex ultrasound. Okay, so please remember the investigation of choice for varicose veins for varicoceles in the testis, for deep vein thrombosis is all a Doppler ultrasound or a duplex ultrasound. So the answer should be the duplex ultrasound. Now, the next question here, a construction worker sustained injury with a fall on hammer on his head. A CT scan image is given. So this is the how the CT scan image was there. Some said radiograph was there and some said CT was there. And this is how you would see a depressed skull fracture. So this is a depressed skull fracture, okay? Or in children, we also call it as a pond fracture, right? So pond fracture or depressed skull fracture. And there was another question, a patient with headaches and hypertension and elevated metanephrines, which investigation is indicated in this patient? So you had a patient with history of pheochromocytoma, elevated metanephrines, tells you this is pheochromocytoma, right, headache and hypertension. And they asked you which investigation is indicated in this patient. Would you go for Sestami B scan, MIBG scan, PET scan or CT abdomen? Remember, Sestami B scan is used for parathyroid adenoma, parathyroid adenoma, right? MIBG scan is the one which we prefer in pheochromocytoma. pheochromocytoma. In pheochromocytoma, please remember in adrenal pheochromocytoma or abdominal pheochromocytoma, the investigation of choice is MRI. On MRI, pheochromocytoma, adrenal pheochromocytoma, abdominal pheochromocytoma, they can be easily identified with a light bulb like area in the region of the pheochromocytoma. It produces a very bright area, the light bulb appearance on a T2-weighted MRI. But for extra abdominal pheochromocytoma, we go for DOPA PET. This is more sensitive investigation than MIBG. So unless the DOPA PET is mentioned, we generally consider PET scan or 18FDG PET, right? So DOPA PET is different. This is used for pheochromocytoma. It's more sensitive than MIBG. Because they, they mentioned the PET scan only or 18FDG PET, we would not choose that. We would still go for what? MIBG. That one is very useful for identifying pheochromocytomas. And some of the students said they were shown this image and they asked you, what is this image used for? So please remember this image is a pocket Doppler ultrasound which is used to look at flow of blood or to look for you know fetal heart rate. So this is a pocket Doppler that is used to look at the flow of blood or the you know fetal heart rate. They give you other questions where you had a fracture of the shaft of the humerus right they gave you a fracture shaft of humerus and they give a clinical picture where the patient had a bridge drop and they asked to which nerve is damaged. So you have to identify the radiograph as a fracture shaft of humerus having bridge drop. This would be radial nerve injury, right? So this is radial nerve injury and uh, you have to identify the fracture shaft and correlate that fracture shaft would be associated with radial nerve injury. And uh, 
especially the fracture shaft, the distal shaft is more associated with radial nerve injury, distal shaft fracture of the humerus. This is called as Holstein Lewis fracture, right? And this has high incidence of radial nerve injuries. So these were the questions that were tested in radiology in this FMG July exam. And uh, understanding of radiology, radiological images, which investigations to you know choose is becoming an important part of your exams. So do focus on radiology when you're going for your upcoming exams. And I hope that many of you have written this exam, have got most of the questions right. And uh, stay hopeful and our uh, best wishes are with you for a successful result. Okay, take care. Thank you so much.